Hi everyone, welcome to China Mosaic. My name is Yan Jiang. I'm the founder of Skull Sports. For the past months, we have witnessed some great tragedies and uh, comedies of football in China. Uh, first of all, the uh, full international team didn't perform too well in the World Cup qualification in Asia. But uh, just in a couple of days' time, the club competition of the Asian Champions League, which showed us Guangzhou Evergrande had become the dominant force in Asian football. Basically, it's the same group of players who served for these two purposes. You know, for the uh, for international team, there were at least nine players coming out from the Guangzhou Evergrande for the club. How could they, in full times, a period, that they could deliver such different, such contrasting results? The full international team couldn't even defeat China Hong Kong, and that caused a great havoc among public life, among public media, especially on social media platform. There were so many taunts and uh, jokes about the low performance of CFA as well as uh, the uh, team China. But uh, uh, in the middle of the uh, of November, uh, Guangzhou Evergrande reached the top of professional football in Asia again, second time in three years period. They won at the home of the second Asian Champions League trophy. That was considered to be great success of China. So here is the question, which one is the real face of football in China? In my opinion, I would say neither of them could really represent football in China. You know, about eight months ago, the central government issued a very important public policy under the title of Total Football Reform in China. It covered almost all aspects of football in China as a social society and as a great uh, educational tool for the younger generations in this society. The full international team didn't um, meet the demand of this uh, reform and the professional level of football, especially going to every ground, seemed to have surpassed the expectation. But that's not the point. And I do not think the uh, Team China should perform this slowly in the World Qualification um, period. They should at least reach the last 12 of this Asian qualification for World Cup 2018 in Russia. A series of problems lying in the uh, reform process football in China, starting from the organization uh, committee, from the uh, organizing body, which is the China Football Association. I think they were not really effective in organizing the full international team, from uh, selecting the head coach. The current one is a, a French coach, which had some reputation in European football, but I'm not sure whether he's up to the job of managing a team, the scale of Team China, and the service and all kinds of friendly preparations for this World Cup qualification. You know, it's a long process of qualification. It would ideally last more than two years. But how long did we prepare for this qualification? I'm not that sure. And uh, on the uh, professional level, Guangzhou Evergrande seems to be a great example. But it's not a model, it's just a phenomenon, one club phenomenon. Uh, I'm not sure whether all these other football clubs, whether a major clubs or professional clubs, could copy the idol, the idea of uh, Guangzhou Evergrande. You have to pump a lot of cash into this club in a very, very short period of time, uh, which is beyond the reach of most of the other professional clubs, not to mention in China, even Europe. You cannot imagine all clubs can, uh, in the top five leagues could take up this Grand Evergrande model. So it's not an ideal model. It's a kind of one-off phenomenon. And to a certain extent, the success of Grand Evergrande really impeded on the progress of the national team because both the players have to play for both teams in a very congested competition schedule. Uh, they have to allocate their energy and they have to think about, you know, which performance, which competition would benefit themselves individually. 
this could be a sonic issue and um, I'm quite sure none of the four international players would face this challenge directly. But at the bottom of the heart, they knew for certain that their professional career would only last five to eight years. So they have to cherish the performance opportunities for the club because the clubs are paying them for everything. And the service and the preparation conditions of the full international team is not well enough. So CFA really needs to take up the position of themselves in the whole reform process. I hope that in the future, the outside forces could really pay more attention to football, especially to the organizing a structure of football in China. That could be the key of our overall reform. Thanks for watching.